Ja. Halleluja. Halleluja. Is everyone hearing me? Halleluja. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Cheryl. Halleluja. Halleluja. Yes, we just want to give the Lord all our heart, all of our heart, because he said in his word that we should love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, with all our might, with all our strength, with everything that is in us, with all our minds, he requires all of us. Amen. And it starts with the heart. And so even as, you know, we were worshiping, um, with, you know, as we were listening to these worship songs and worshiping, the Holy Spirit brought me to a scripture. Um, and it's from First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And I'm not going to read all of it for the sake of time. But the essence of what uh, Peter, the, the, the Lord was saying through Peter is, is he wants us to be adorned, our hearts to be adorned with an inner beauty. And I don't believe, even though um, Peter here was talking to women, I really believe that this is for men and women because at the beginning and end of the day, it's all about the heart. Amen? And so the question I want to ask, I'm asking myself, and I want to ask everyone before I start this short message is, does your inner life reflect the things that God finds beautiful? Does our inner life reflect the things that God deems beautiful? Just meditate on that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Today, as we look, the Lord has been kind of talking to me about the heart for some time. And then he started talking to me about um, idols and um, altars. And I was like, I've, I've been getting a lot of dreams, you know, about preparing the heart and the preparation of the heart. And, um, and I was like, well, Lord, I, my heart. It's fine, Lord. I, I, I've devoted my whole heart to you. But as I've been reflecting and meditating on and studying all about the heart, that, you know, and what is the heart? That the heart is the seat of the emotions, the passions, the, our attitudes, our appetites, our affections. That's deep within. And I had to admit that even though I thought my heart was all for the Lord, there were places in me that had not been fully given over to the Lord. And so I wanted to share this message today. Not, <clears throat> you know, I'm not even preaching. I'm just... I'm just sharing some information that you all can take and run with it and uh, study it out some more because that's what the Lord is saying to us in this season, that we need to lay down our altars, I mean, lay down our idols, anything that we have put in place of the Lord in any area of our life. You know, we have one heart. It's one heart. And God doesn't want a divided heart. Sometimes we don't even realize that our hearts are divided. But they are when we start to um, 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 search our hearts. Because that's what 
uh, Psalm 51 says that we should do. Psalm 51 verse 10. It, it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Although that was Old Testament, and we know that Jesus came and he actually um, created in us a new heart. The old heart is no more. But many times we operate out of our old heart. And I'm going to tell you how that works. It's not that we have a whole or old heart. It's that we have memories of how our old heart used to be, what our old heart was. There are memories that have been stored up um, in our minds and, and in our souls. And God is saying, we need to do some housekeeping. We need to cleanse these areas of our heart because he has given us a new heart in which he wants us to operate from cleanse you know the bible says um i believe it's in proverbs i think it could be proverbs chapter three or four i think it's proverbs chapter three where it says you know out of the heart come the issues of life you know what 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 have been the issues of life that are coming forth out of our lives? Is it something that we we're not pleased with? Is it something that we would like to change? Some things that we would like to change, then it starts with the heart. Amen. I want us to just look at one man and I'm going to give you the scriptures and just read through them very quickly. And why it is so important for, um, um, why the heart is so important to God. You know, um, David was a, a man after God's own heart. Not that David was perfect, as we all know. Many of us know David's story. You know, he, he actually orchestrated um, and, 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 and executed the killing of a man. And he committed adultery. And he wasn't the greatest father. His, his sons turned out to be uh, very questionable and one of them even tried wanted to kill him one of his sons so you know David was it was not that he was perfect but he always ran back to God are we running to God or are we running to other places or other people are we trying to escape from the issues of life are we trying to escape by, you know, sometimes we escape by watching TV or our favorite show or, you know, sometimes we escape by shopping online, um, buying a lot of stuff that we don't even need. This is, this is what the Lord is after today. He wants to. He wants to, he wants us to look at the areas in our life that are not totally given over to him. So Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says, God says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. I will remove a heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, softening our hearts towards him. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Proverbs 4, 23 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, all our heart, and do not lean on our own understanding. This one is a powerful one. How many times have we leaned to our own understanding. And it has got us into trouble. I, I can think of one <laughs> such thing that I, I just leaned to my own understanding. I didn't lean to what God was saying. I didn't, I didn't focus on trusting God with my whole heart, but I leaned to my own understanding very dangerous 
And then he says, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will make our path straight. Many times we have been influenced by many, many different people or, or, or thoughts, our minds. And so the, the Lord is after a clean heart because when our hearts are clean, then it will direct even our minds because our hearts will, will be so positioned um, and focused on, on, on the things of God that our minds will start to become renewed and replenished because he will be doing the cleansing. He will be doing the orchestrating. He will be um, 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 doing within us what we could never do for ourselves. And there are many more. There's one last one I want to share. Romans chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. For the heart, for with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. You know, when we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth, it's made unto us salvation. That's what happens. We're saved by the confessing of the things that are stored within our heart. And so can you imagine if the heart is not believing unto unto godly things, then it's going to bring destruction to us. Amen? So our heart, God is after our heart to, to make it his altar. Even right here now on this um, Zoom, this is, this is an altar that we're building onto the Lord. When we talk about altars, it's a place of trans, transaction. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place where um, the spirit of God meets man and, and, and does uh, uh, spiritual transactions. Amen. The Bible says that we, we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto him. And I'm just going to read something that I, I, I found. Um, it says here, this sacrifice follows our sacrificing to God, follows the pattern of Christ's sacrifice in which he gave his body as a living offering for the life of the world. He made his body a living sacrifice because although he was killed, he continues to live. And in this transaction, at this altar, which is the cross, by the way, uh, at this, in this transaction, death received its ransom. What do I mean by that? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Death requires a ransom to be paid. And Jesus Christ was that ransom. He gave his life as a ransom for us. But he's still alive. So death has lost, death has lost and has suffered punishment, amen? So Jesus Christ, our, our bridegroom is calling us. He's calling us to his altar. He's calling us to his presence, embracing and um, stewarding, if you want to use that word, stewarding his presence. That's created, that's creating an altar. He wants us to remember the sacrifice that he did on the cross. You know, life has got very um, challenging for all of us. All of us have something going on. Amen. All of us have something going on. But, but, but God is saying, I want you to keep the transaction that was made at the cross keep it in the forefront of your heart and your minds because that's going to start 
a turnaround in your life and in our lives. It's going to create an opportunity for God to work. We have to remember that there was a time when we experienced a change in our lives, when we offered ourselves to Christ as our bridegroom, for him to be our bridegroom and for us to be his bride. And we walked down that aisle with him. All of us can remember at some point doing that. And Jesus is calling us back to that life of sacrifice, to that life of walking with him. You know, the Bible says that we are married to another. And just as in the natural, we have, we steward the relationships that we have. You know, we, 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 whether we're married or we might not be married, but we have a close friend, um, we, we're, we steward that relationship. And in the same way, God, Jesus is calling us to steward the relationship that we have with him on a daily basis. We have to be conscious of that. We have to be intentional about that because there's something that God is about to do in this earth realm. I don't know what it is, but there is something about to happen and he's calling us as it, not just individually, but as his church, as a ministry, to be ready. Remember the, 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 the five virgins, the five um, um, wise virgins who were prepared. Their hearts were fully prepared for what to meet their bridegroom. In other words, for what God was about to do for his appearance. And, and, and the, the five foolish virgins were not prepared. Let us have this at the forefront of our hearts. What we can see in this natural realm is not, it's temporal. You know, don't worry. I'm not saying we're not to be prepared, you know, in this natural realm or we're not to do things. God is calling us to operate in this natural realm, but operate unto him. Let not our focus be, let, our, let us not idolize things as our bank accounts or, or um, you know, that special person, or whether it's a husband or a wife or a friend or, 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 or pastors. God is saying, don't put the... The, the cart before the horse, put the horse before the cart and let us consider why we're doing certain things, how we're doing certain things, when we're doing certain things. Is it God's timing? What does God have to say about this? This is all happening at the altar. This is, this, is, this is the sacrifice we're making unto God. How many times have we gone and done things? How many times has it been that we have um, run? We might have got, God might have given us a clue or a key and then we just ran with it without even consulting him further. God is calling us to this type of working with him, building an altar with him at every area and every level of our lives. So we have personal altars and corporate altars, praying in unity, you know, the personal altar, I, one, one of the things that the Lord um, said to me, uh, and I didn't even think about it that way, but, but he told me that God met 
Moses, remember the burning bush? That was an altar that was erected. God, God was able to bring Moses to that altar. Moses didn't know it at the time, but that was an altar unto God. That was a place of God's, a, a spiritual encounter with God. And God started to transact and do business with Moses right there. God wants us to steward that kind of relationship and presence with him because then we will never be the same again. We'll never be the same. The things that we say and do will not be the same because God is saying he's doing a new thing. And so be it let us not be a stumbling block in God's way. That's pretty much how I sense that I need to say that. What could be some of the barriers even? As, we, as we're talking through this, as we're asking ourselves, you know, about the importance of building an altar unto the Lord. First of all, having our hearts as an altar unto him. And then also having a personal altar right here, right where we are in our homes, making a personal altar unto him and making a personal, uh, making a corporate altar. Maybe there's a time that um, we need to get together as a ministry and pray to God in unity, right? As we, as we, Consider all of that. Let us consider that if we're not doing these things, if we're not building um, a personal altar unto God, if we're, if we're not devoting ourselves entirely to his ways and to his understanding, could that be a reason for us not having the, the answers to prayers that we're seeking? Could there be barriers that have invisible barriers that we are not seeing? Because the truth is, if we're not building an altar unto the Lord, unknowingly, we're building an altar unto the, the devil. And I just want to let us understand, you might be saying, but, but you know, God can do anything. Yeah, God can do anything. But God, in his sovereignty, chose to give God, to sorry, to give man dominion over the earth. He said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let them have dominion. So there is a, a partnership and a strategic partnership that God wants to have with man. Let them have, have dominion. And he says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. God is saying that he's giving us permission to go into his courts and transact the kind of business that we need to transact so that he can give us the answers that we need. God has given us authority, yes, but power comes from God. Power comes from God. And so if we want God's power, if we want to operate in authority with God's power, we need to build an altar unto him. And so the last thing I'm going to leave with you is in order for God to work, we have to, he, he, he requires an altar. In order for God to work, he requires an altar. You know, Elijah recognized this. You remember um, when Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord? according to the number of the tribes of Israel. 
And then is when the fire came. That's when the fire came. Do we want the fire of God in our lives? Can I, can I see some hands? Do we want the fire of God in our lives? Build an altar unto the Lord. You will never be disappointed. And you will walk in authority and power. And other people will see the authority that you walk in. And they will be drawn to you. You're looking for um, family members to be saved. You're looking for um, things to happen at the workplace that are out of whack, relationships to come in line with God and with, uh, with, 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 with God's ways, build him an altar, amen? Let's pray. I just feel like we should pray right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today that you are calling us to a higher place, God. You're calling us to, uh, um, just as you said in your word that we're seated with you in heavenly places. But the enemy is also in heavenly places. <laughs> and so we need to kick the enemy out by repositioning our lives so that our, our hearts can be after what you are after. You're, you have called us to, to, to have hearts of love because you love us with an unconditional love and you're calling us to display that love. Help us, oh God, to cleanse our hearts so that we can operate with complete love, with total love, with patience, with kindness. Help us God to walk on this earth because you said in your word, as you are in this world, so are we. <sighs> Let us meditate on that word, God. We don't have to try to be anything, we are. We are who you called us to be because we are in you and you are in us. But we need to steward our lives in a way that we can partner with you because you have already accomplished everything at the cross. And all you're calling us to do is to re rehabit, re-inhabit, re-inhabit those places that you have already created for us in the spirit so that we can walk in authority and power in this world because we're going to need it, Lord. We need it. We repent, God, of all the times that we have been outside of your will and, and we have just been stiff-necked and been outside of your will. We repent, God, and we turn back to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just sense that the Lord is, is, is doing something in our hearts today. He's doing, he's working in our hearts even now as we're confessing, we're repenting and confessing. He's doing something behind the scenes. He's working things out for us. I hand over to our next minister, amen. Amen. I'm Minister Lisa, and we're going to be doing ties. 1 Chronicle 29, verse 9 to 12. 
Then the people rejoiced because they had given willingly, but with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Therefore David blessed the land and the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Bless are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Year, O Lord, is the greatness and the power of the glory and the victory and the majesty of all that is in the heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your heart are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Everything that the Lord is saying in the Bible is just saying, just be free with the Lord. Given the tithes of 10%. And with that, it will be blessed. So for anyone that would like to give their tithes or offering to Promises Kept Church, please see the screen with the information or you can use cash app Promises Kept Ministry or PayPal at Promises Kept Ministry. Now we're going to take a few moments to listen to our offering song. One of the best ways that we can prove that we love the Lord is by giving. Amen. So we're going to sing a song about giving. And it's got some hand motions and I want you to join with me. Okay, will you do that? Here we go. Watch me. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over again, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Help me out now, here we go. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running And a smile on your face Give as the Lord has given to you How you give is a reflection of your gratitude So give and it will come back to you Good measure, press down, shake it together And ride it over again And it will come back to you When you give To God and you will be blessed. Don't be stingy and don't be tight. Learn from the widow in the Bible who gave her last night. So give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and
I'd like to introduce you to Minister Deborah, who will be providing us with the closing prayer for today's service. Lord, we just want to thank you for the word that was brought forth. We want to give you all the honor and all the praise, Father Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that our heart was open to receive your word today, Father Lord God. May we apply it to our each and everyday life, Father Lord Jesus, putting down our idols before your altar, Father Lord God, and picking up your cross, Father Lord Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.